Hello and welcome to the ANSYS Student Edition video series. In this video we'll be talking about bolt pretension using ANSYS AIM and the model we'll be using to talk about that is this half symmetry model of a bolted flange. Each of the bolts will be getting a 1000 newton preload. We'll be applying a 2000 newton horizontal load on the pipe, a 1 megapascal pressure in the pipe, and be defining frictional contact between the flanges. The goal of this model is to determine the stress and deflection in the flanges and the contact status and pressure between the two flanges. Now let's go ahead and move over into AIM. So here we have ANSYS AIM. I'm going to be doing a static structural analysis, so I want to pick a structural simulation process template. I'm going to be importing some existing geometry, and I want it to detect contact automatically. So I'll go ahead and create simulation process. Pick my geometry and click open. Now the first thing I'm going to do is move into the mesh and generate that. The only thing I'm going to change is bump up the mesh resolution by one notch here. Click generate mesh. Now again, I'm using a half symmetry model here. That's a great thing to take advantage of whenever you can. Uh, so anytime you can use symmetry, you can cut your model size in half or even by more sometimes. That's especially useful if you're using something like one of the academic editions that has a limit on the number of nodes and elements you can use. So here I can use a half symmetry model and get more detail than I could with a full model. If you want to look at how many nodes and elements you have, you can look at the statistics section of the mesh. So here I've got about 13,000 nodes and about 6,000 elements. Let's move on into the physics now, where I'm going to define my boundary conditions. First thing I'm going to do is define a fixed support on this face. So right click, add structural conditions support, and the default type is fixed. Next I'm going to define my symmetry boundary conditions, which are going to be a frictionless support. So I'll grab these four faces, say add structural conditions support, and I'll switch the type to frictionless. That'll prevent the faces from leaving that plane, just like a symmetry plane, but they're free to slide around within the plane. Next up we want to add the pressure on the inside, so right click add structural conditions pressure. I want that to be one megapascal. Right now I'm in Pascal, so I'm gonna switch my unit system up here to something with millimeters and re-enter that. I also wanna apply this force load to the top face. And here, I'm going to be defining this by directional components. And since it's a half symmetry model, even though I want the total force to be 2,000 newtons, I'm only going to apply half of that here. So 1,000 newtons in the positive z direction. Now all I need to do is add the bolt pretension. So I'll go ahead and hide this body, make it a little easier to get at those. Click the bolt shank, right click, and say add bolt pretension. Now there are two ways to define a bolt pretension. One is by the axial force. This determines the amount of tensile force in the bolt shank. The other way is by an adjustment, which is in terms of a length change of the bolt shank. So if you knew, for instance, how many turns a nut had been tightened and you knew the pitch of the screw, you could calculate the length change of the bolt shank. I'm gonna be defining these in terms of axial force. That's 1,000 Newtons. We'll do the same thing on the other one. All right, and then I'll right click and say show all and go back to physics. The next thing I want to do is change my contact regions. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're using bolt preload is that you don't want a bonded contact between the bolt shank and the bolt hole. Now the reason for this is the way that those bolt pretension loads work under the hood is that they go in and cut the bolt in half on the bolt shank and reattach the two halves using pretension elements. And then these pretension elements will apply some kind of load and force the two halves of the bolt to overlap a little bit to generate the tensile load in the bolt shank that you're looking for.
So if we have a bonded contact along the bolt shank, that can prevent those pretension elements from overlapping the two halves of the bolt correctly and generating the tension in the bolt shank that we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do is go into my interface conditions and make sure that I don't have too many here. Now I have a small gap between the bolt shank and the bolt hole. So if I go to my interface generator, I can use this tolerance specification. Right now my tolerance is 0.3 millimeters. I'm gonna change that to manual. The gap is a little smaller than that. So I'm gonna make this something uh, quite a bit smaller. All my other contacts are line to line, so it should still pick those up. And I'll click generate interface. And so now you can see I went from nine to seven contacts. So if I look through my contacts, you can see I have my contact between the two flanges. These two contacts are between the nut and the bottom flange, the bolt head and the top flange, and then the bonded contact between the nut and the bolt. Now you'll notice here I'm not modeling the bolt threads. The reason for that is that modeling bolt threads requires a very fine mesh on the bolt threads and is very computationally expensive. And in general, when you're modeling some parts with bolted connections, you may have a lot of bolts and so in general you're not looking at a really detailed model of the bolt itself you'd mostly be interested in things like the forces on the bolts which you could use in a hand calculation to determine if the bolt will fail and then you're interested in the stresses deflections and the rest of the part now i am going to change one thing with these contacts here and that's switch this contact to a frictional contact so i'm going to switch from bonded behavior one to create new Switch that to frictional and give it a friction coefficient. Now this is a little more realistic than having a, the whole flange bonded. It'll allow the flanges to separate. The downside of using frictional contact is that since the flanges can separate, you have this nonlinear contact. And what that means is that the stiffness of the part can change based on what's touching and what isn't. That makes the stiffness nonlinear, makes the problem nonlinear, and requires an iterative solution. So this will take significantly longer to solve in general than it would if you just used a bonded contact, which doesn't change status and therefore doesn't change stiffness as the solution progresses. Let's go back to physics. Now the last thing I need to do before I run this analysis is set up a multi-step simulation. And this is the general best practice for when you're using a bolted connection. Now what this means is that I'm going to have multiple stages of my simulation. In the first stage or the first step, I'm going to be tightening down my bolts and just establishing the contact between the two flanges. In the second step, I'm going to be applying all my other loads. And this mirrors what happens to this part or would happen into this part in real life. In real life, this part, you're not going to be applying this horizontal load on it before the bolts are tightened down. Really, the bolts get tightened down first, the thing gets assembled, and then all the other loads get applied to it. So that's what we're going to do here as well. And to set that up, I'm going to go to multi-step simulation settings. Right now my number of steps is one. I need to add one. To do that I'm going to go to manage steps. That'll bring up the simulation step manager. So I can click add step. So here we have another step. Now here I can control what loads are active and the behavior of each load throughout the course of the analysis. So my supports, I want to leave those active the whole time. The first support is that fixed support and that one's necessary to prevent rigid body motion. My second support is my symmetry condition. The part doesn't stop being symmetric partway through, so I'm going to leave that active the whole time. I'm going to deactivate these two loads by setting the factor to zero. So now I have, in simulation step one, no pressure and no force applied. So these values that I typed in earlier get multiplied by this factor to determine what force is applied or what pressure is applied during that load step. And now the last thing I need to do is switch the behavior of these bolt pretensions in my second load step. And so as I was talking about before, 
Under the hood, what the program's doing is cutting the bolt in half and reattaching the two halves with these pretension elements. Those pretension elements then get whatever pretension force applied to them that you specify. Now, if I just leave it as is, right now it's going to apply a thousand newton preload in the first step, which is what I want. But then in the second step, it's going to just keep 1,000 newtons worth of tension in each of those bolts, regardless of what else is happening in the model. That's not how I want it to behave. I want it to just lock at that value, so lock at that overlap that it's generating in the first load step. And if I have some other loads that would increase the tension in the, in the bolt, I want that tension to increase. So to do that, I need to switch this to locked behavior. And I'm just going to click this button here in order to switch it to locked. And so that means that the overlap that it uses to generate a thousand newtons of pretension in the first load step will be maintained throughout the rest of the analysis. So I'll do the same thing for the other bolt. And there we go. So now I've got my supports active for both steps. My pressure and force aren't being applied in the first step, but are in the second load step. And my bolt preload, I'm preloading the bolts in the first step and then locking that overlap between the two halves of the bolt in the second load step. So this is the general best practice for what you want to do when you're modeling bolted connections with preload. I'll close that out. And now I'm ready to solve, so I'll click the Solve Physics button. Alright, now that we've finished the solve, let's go ahead and post process. I'll click on Results. First thing I want to look at is the stress in these two flanges. So I'll right click, say Add Results Equivalent Stress. Go over and click Evaluate. Here we can see we have the highest stresses in the sides here. That makes sense since we've got this lateral load on the top. Next, I'll look at the displacement magnitude, which is automatically generated. I'll have to evaluate it. Here we can see it makes sense. We've got the most deformation up top and a magnitude that makes sense. Let's move on to the contact results. So I'll right click and say add results. This will be a contour result. I'll pick contact pressure as a variable. That'll default to all the contacts. So I'm just going to pick contact 1, which is my frictional contact. Then I'll click Evaluate. Here we can see we have the highest pressure right under this part here. Again, with the lateral load, that makes sense. We also have some high pressure around this bolt and some pressure over here, but we've lost some pressure around this bolt. Let's take a look at the contact status. Again, I'll click Evaluate. And so here we see with, that we have sliding contact around this bolt and on this side, but we've lost contact around this bolt and we've also lost contact around the pipe itself. So this wouldn't be watertight in this case. Let's take a look at what it looks like after the first step. So we'll go to Simulation Step 1 and click Evaluate. So here we can see we have sticking contact around the bolts, but we actually don't have contact around the pipe itself. So if we were expecting this pipe to be watertight, we may want to do something like add a washer or increase the size of the bolt head, increase the bolt preload, add more bolts, move the bolts closer to the center, something like that in order to get the contact status as either sticking or sliding all the way around. We could also add something like a gasket. This concludes this video. Thank you for tuning in.